the 14th anniversary of God scaring the crap out of me. This is August 8th, 2022, 14 years ago to the, the event that I'm going to tell you about. This is a little different video, but I'm to roll around on the anniversary of this date. In thinking about that event, for this video, I realized it was also my eighth month being a Christian. I, I came to him on eight eight. He gave me this event that I was uh, earlier in the year. He gave me another event, the most pleasant event you could ever want. I had asked for a dream because I'd heard of other people saying they had a dream from. I asked for one. I thought it was going to be an apocalyptic, you know, nightmare kind of, you know, middle of the night thing. You'd wake up in a cold sweat. Uh, what I got was coming out of a 15 minute nap, I had these indistinct visions in my head and in my across them. You couldn't really see any detail, but I kn knew that they represented the Trinity. And then suddenly every it was filled with a brand new emotion that I didn't know. The emotion of trustworthiness, radiating faithfulness. I, I, indescribable, unbelievable. I only had a few. I sat bolt upright in bed and said out loud, we can trust him. It radiates off of him. It's amazing. And I, and I'm, other incredible, awesome attributes. But for that feeling, and I said, don't ever forget this. It's, well, I did forget it, but I didn't forget the experience. But then came August 8th, 2008, eight, eight, the eighth month of my walk with him. I was driving down from, uh, I had lived in Houston for a year or two, growing Worked there once briefly as an adult. I said, hey, let's drive down. Not us. I just myself. Drive down. I'm talking about in the Royal Weef sense. We drive down to Houston, shall we? And so we, I drove down and a Marriott across from the Galleria on uh, West High type road there in Houston that goes from. And I had planned on having an early dinner night of the Olympics in Beijing. They also began. So I ate at a year old restaurant on seafront there named Christie's. Uh, I was a kid, so it was kind of fun going back and I finished dinner an hour and a half walk back to the hotel. Now I've checked on a, on a weather site that will show you the weather of any major city I just wanted to see if I remembered it correctly, and I did. Uh, it was hot. It was 95 degrees. That could, it could have been worse. 95 degrees, 65 percent humidity. Rain that night or throughout the weekend, completely dry. Just some white blue sky and a little light wind as I walked back to the hotel. And along the way, I passed a, a blockbuster video putting the precious cargo inside, and I and I waited. myself, I should invest in Blockbuster. I don't know if I did, but it would. And I started thinking about Christian broadcasts that I had heard that morning when I drove down from Austin. And if I was in the car, I'm listening to a Christian broadcast. I mean, I need to catch up. Uh, I, I, I squandered over a half century. And it, I need programs that I listened to was Pastor J. Vernon McGee, Dr. J. Vernon McGee through the Bible. And great guy. Fun to listen to. No nonsense, straight shooter, biting sense of humor, very knowledgeable. He said something in that morning's broadcast that kind of puzzled me a little bit for God. But what he said was, I think a lot of the problems in the church go away if we had more fear of God. So 
walking, I'm thinking, what, what really is fear of God? Is that, it's got to be more than respect, but how much more? My first year being a Christian, so I threw up a little prayer of this prayer. It's now inscribed on my DNA, as are the next two minutes of my life. Uh, and the prayer was this, God, because I didn't call him Father at that time. I, I just felt it was too casual for me, coming from the depravity I lived in, into the kingdom of God. I didn't feel like I had the Father. Now, that was wrong, of course. I should have called him Father day one, but that's just that was my mindset. That's, that's where I was. So I said, God, do I fear you enough? In Christ's name, amen. Now, the moment I said men in amen later, when I came to in my head, men, the ground around me suddenly white. You couldn't see. It also got incredibly loud because the tree I was walking under was just struck by lightning. And I, I grew up in Texas and with a couple of years in Oklahoma. I, I'm used to lightning, but I've seen the light from lightning and the sound of lightning at the same time. It's always been you see the light, you see the bolt, then you wait a couple of seconds and then it's up to the speed of light. Well, I heard them both at the same time. I never saw the bolt coming because it came down. But I was in a panic. And when I say that that lightning was loud, okay, I once in the 70s went to a Grand Funk Railroad out of the arena because it was hurting my ears. That has all Stan's list of loud things. Well, the Grand to the second place on that list because that lightning explosion was even louder. And I was disoriented. I was confused. I was shell shocked. I wasn't. That was the last thing in the world I expected. I didn't know what was going on, and the first thing that came into my mind was, "You're going to die." How did you get yourself in this situation? And, and I panicked. I, I, I thought, if I'm going to save myself, what was going on? I got to get in that hotel. So I took off running. In August in Houston, that's you know, no easy feat. Me, you know, because I just had dinner, I was hauling with me a complete fried seafood platter. And I had upgraded the French fries for $2 to a loaded baked potato. So I'm hauling that with me. Now, in, everybody in Houston, in that area, heard that lightning. And it was rush hour traffic, so I'm sure a whole bunch of people's heads, and they looked up in the sky and thought, where did that come from? threatening cloud above Houston. And and the people along in stop and go traffic, I bet a bunch of them saw that lightning. And more than one carload saw me running. You're panic running. I just hope I had a high pitched voice. I don't think so. I, I think it was a run, but it was a panic run. And I'm sure a few people said, see that guy? He was under the tree that just got struck by lightning. I hope he's okay. Is that blood on it? No, it's cocktail sauce. It's just cocktail sauce. So I just, finally, when I got within a half block, my wits, I realized there's no more lightning. There's no thunder. There's no, sky is still blue. The clouds are still puffy white. What? Go inside the lobby and, you know, it's business as usual in there. And I'm, and I asked myself, what just happened? So I, I relived the, the situation, walked out of the blockbuster video, waved at the security guard, and thought, said a prayer to God, uh, God, enough. And he threw a lightning bolt at me. I asked him, was to throw a lightning bolt at me. As if to say, oh, I don't know, Stan, you tell me. Do you fear me enough? And I'm going to tell you, I was mad for a week and a half. 
I went up to my room and I angry watched the Olympics, the opening night at Beijing. I mean, I just sat there with my arms folded in bed, chewing on my lip. I asked a question, do I fear you enough? And he throws a lightning bolt. That was his answer. Almost killed me. Could have killed me. What I should have been thinking, but how I lived, damaged at all physically by it, is, is another question. Because when the ground around you starts up from the lightning that's coming, you're too close. You're too close. Something could happen, but nothing bad did. And instead of being all stubbed up, I should have been grateful that I wasn't a story on the local 10 o'clock news, because that could easily have happened. Uh, strange lightning came out of the sky in the Galleria area, surprising commuters. But for one man visiting our town, he was simply at the wrong place at the wrong time and was walking under the tree. Paramedics pronounced him dead at the site. Later, his last meal consisted of two fried shrimp, some unidentifiable piece of fish that was also deep fried, and a loaded baked potato. But I, but I didn't die. But a lot of people do die each and every year uh, from lightning strikes, and a lot of people are injured. Just last week, three people died in Washington. Seriously injured. But he made his point. It would be no. You can ask him if you want, but I'm telling is going to be no. I don't care how much sense of fear of God you have. It ain't enough. It ain't enough. Now, as I look back on that story, I think it's hilarious. I think it's the funniest thing that's ever happened to me. It, 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 serious, too. It, I just hope that he told some angels ahead of time. Because, it, you know, it was too funny for just me and a few people along Westheimer Road. We told some angels, Friday night, be in the Galleria area. We watch for a guy going past the Blockbuster video because he's about to me enough. And I think you'll find my response. It was. And so what I learned this year is he is both incredibly incredibly powerful, and there's no way to describe the fear of God in, in a human metaphor. I did as well. It's like if you were in the fourth grade and you had a teacher you really respect, really respected, but you didn't want to get on their bad side. Now, that's not what the fear of God is. It, everything was going good. The dessert being brought up by room service as I watched the opening day Olympics and all of that changed. And when the in heaven is over, it's all going to change for the world right now to come to God. And you can only come to God seem as long as you have that, as long as your sense of justice is better than his, you're not coming into the kingdom of God. When like I did in December 2007, for the first time, I went to him, and this time I didn't have accusation. I had a need, and the need was him. And you should grab it.